to Parents Perspective with Mike and Amy. My name is Mike Thomas and with me is Amy Bishop. And this video series is sponsored by the St. Clair County Speak Youth Coalition, funded in part by Region 10 and in partnership with various businesses and nonprofit organizations in the Blue Water area. So we've had a couple really lengthy discussions the past few weeks, some really deep discussions. We want to kind of soften it up a little bit and come up with some fun activities that we can do over the next couple segments. So we want to start off today with uh, outdoor activities. A lot of times what happens is when children have a lot of things going on and stress out and they don't have a lot of ways to vent and they start getting bored, many times that can turn to a lot of different activities. That could be criminal behavior, that could be substance use behavior as well too. What we wanna do is give you a couple ideas that you can do at home with your children or give them ideas to do at home that could be fun, but we'll start with outside. So Amy, I don't know about you, I've got a lot of activities I love doing outdoors. What are some of your favorites? Well, Mike, to tell you the truth, this is where I struggle a little bit. Um, I'm pretty good when you're shut in and talking about indoor activities, um, especially in the winter months. Like I love summer, I run on sun. So as a parent, I struggle a bit when it comes to outdoor activities in the winter or you know the cooler months. So I'm really excited about today's for you to give me some hints. Some things that um, we have done, my son and I, are my walk and talks. And this can pretty much be done almost in any weather. Um, you know, bundle up and, and definitely have, you know, some good tread on your, on your shoes and such. But I love to go to the parks and see the, um, the different weather and the different effect on our parks during, you know, because we live in uh, the Blue Water area. And so all the lake is there. And just to see the different ice formations, of course, you got to be careful on the edges. But just to, to look at the water in a, a different, it's just amazing to me. Look how cold this is. There's ice there and we swim in this in the summer. So, and I just find it um, a great conversation starter. It's sort of like you can physically get rid of that stress while you talk. And also you get to vent a little bit and you get to know and be a part of daily life with your child. So walking and talking is our thing. And if things are a little bit stressed in the household, I say, you know what, let's do walk and talk. And it really seems to help. The other thing is when we have a lot of snow, my son loves where we live, we get a lot of drifts. So he he does, um, he tunnels into them and makes like a little fort and it's actually very warm in there. You know, I'll come out and bring them snacks, you know, sort of like camping in the winter or saying um, things like, wow, you know, can you imagine in Alaska living like this in this cold, cold weather with all this snow? So, but other than that, I'm looking to you for a little bit of advice here. You know, it's funny. Some of those things that you were talking about are things I did when I was younger. I was actually in the Boy Scouts in when it was called Blue Water Council here in Port Huron. And I, had, I did a lot of fun stuff like that as well, too. Now, we would uh, take benefit of the local camp, which I know is now not available, but there's a lot of other similar resources in our community as well, too. Uh, the snow drift thing's a blast. I, I've, I've done snow forts as well, and you're right on that. It's actually, if you... Um, build it right, you can keep that environment in there about 32 degrees. And so if you have the right blankets and other things like that, you can actually sleep in those things. And one of these days, Amy, you and I, we got to, we got to build forts and, and do it all, all nighter. I, it's a blast. I'll tell you, but um, you can uh, with just digging into some of the snow mounds they do. I've actually seen people, and I've talked about this in another segment I was doing with another group Sometimes when people are cross country skiing, they can actually use their skis. They can actually use the poles that they're using for cross country skiing and then lay branches over top and build up walls and then put cedar boughs and other uh, pine tree branches and things over top, cover it with snow and they can make like their own little huts inside the snow. Those things are a blast. So that's some of the stuff that I did when I was younger or we would just take a tarp and we'd make um, almost like teepee style we cram a bunch of guys in there when we were camping, we'd have a blast. And the other thing too is cooking outside. Amy, have you ever done any uh, winter cooking or camp cooking like that? You know what? I, I have thought about it, but have never done it. I love to cook outside in the summer. I love grilling. I think that it tastes better. And you know, I could put my 
my grill up closer to the house and be able to do that. I don't know why I don't. In fact, we um, have the skillet as well to even do breakfast. But you're right, getting out and getting that fresh air and kind of just moving and changing the environment a little bit really does uh, lift your mood. I think I'm going to try that. That's an awesome idea. In this day and age too, one cool thing is there's a lot of different groups that are out there that have their own YouTube sites and pages. Uh, you can subscribe. There's one actually, it seems pretty family friendly. I'll share. It's called the Outdoor Boys. There's a gentleman who actually takes his uh, children like some of them are babies. Some of them are a little bit older, like four or five years old. And he goes through and he shows them how to do all these things. And so as far as making outdoor cooking goes, uh, once he sets the fire, I've seen all kinds of cool things. You probably love these as well too, Amy. But um, one of the biggest ones is tinfoil dinners. I did these with scouts and I know a lot of groups show that as well. But it's as simple as taking aluminum foil and you can cut up chicken breast and you can cut up vegetables uh, if you want, you can do lean meats, potatoes, things like that, cut up onions and just stick them in a bed of coals. And it, it, it can take anywhere from a half hour or longer to cook these, but people make their meals right in the tinfoil, right in a bonfire. So other than just having to roast a hot dog or marshmallows over the fire, there are people that'll do that. I've even seen some really cool desserts. So you can take uh, bananas and put in some other ingredients and people have made their own uh, banana splits or other treats like that right inside the fire. Or another thing, if you get the tins, uh, they call them hobo pie makers, where my, you know, that's what my mom calls them. But you can put in uh, butter the bread and you can make pizzas, you can make grilled cheese sandwiches, or even if you want, you can put in uh, apple pie filling or cherry pie filling, you know, whatever your favorite filling is, and you can actually make pies right in the fire as well too. It's a blast. And I'll tell you, my children love doing stuff like that where they can cook outdoors. My favorite though, Amy, you'll love this, baggy eggs. Have you ever heard of those? No, never. <laughs> you are giving me so many ideas because what you're doing here, Mike, with the campfire idea is you're taking a summertime thing that I love and putting it into a winter month to make it you know, fun and exciting is something that I love to do. And so does my son. Like I just bought one of those hoagie. It's the, they either come square or circle. I know what you're talking about. We did pizzas and pies and those over the summer. And so why can't we do that in the winter? Now I live in town, so I have to um, have it con like a contained fire, but I could get charcoal and put it in that, um, that little pot that I have outside with this the screen cover and do those. That's an amazing idea. So what's this other thing you are mentioning? So with baggy eggs, if you get, and again, sometimes people get a little worried about the materials we're talking about. Is that really healthy to cook like this? But what it is, is you take really heavy duty Ziploc bags, okay? And you'll put one inside the other and you can actually take like three or four eggs, however many you want, Add all your ingredients. So if you want to make like an omelet, they're, they're basically uh, baggy eggs or, or um, omelet in a bag. You crack the eggs in, you put in meat, cheese, vegetables, boil them uh, for about what, 10, 11 minutes or so until they're done. And then you can just dump them right down on a paper plate. You have no dishes. Amy, I don't know about you, but I hate dishes. I so, love it. I love it. <laughs> and these are things that a lot of people do, and you can go online and find a lot of recipes for these things. It's not really hard to do. The thing is, is a lot of people think winter, I'm stuck inside, it's cold. Maybe weather like we had yesterday isn't the perfect day to do it. But on some of these days where it's not a lot of snow, and it's just, you know what, I'm tired of sitting inside. These are little things that you can do that are fun. Now, I do want to mention one thing. If you're going to be doing any type of winter activities, if we want to be safe, and it, you know, being part of a healthy way of looking at things, we want to keep safety in mind, it's important that you have the right clothing. A lot of times when people go out, they don't have the right equipment. And so one of the things I'd say is if you are going to do any type of camping, if you're going to be going outside, maybe doing an overnighter or just a long day hike, having the right clothes is going to be helpful. Usually what I recommend folks do is have a base layer, a mid layer, and some type of outer shell that they wear when they're doing that. So if you can get fabrics that are synthetic blends or made out of wool, that's going to be best. A lot of people like to go, well, what about my jeans and a t-shirt? Well, if it's a cotton t-shirt or cotton pants, they absorb water like nothing else. And so I'll typically, when I'm going out, and you guys can see this, if you go onto our website and check or go onto the Speak Instagram pages, I actually do one minute segments on these, but 
there's polypropylene or other synthetic blends that you can use as base layers. Like most of you probably have Under Armour or something like that. I actually went to a military surplus store we used to have in town and I got 100% polypropylene thermals that I wear underneath for tops and bottoms. I love wearing wool socks. Um, if you're allergic to wool, that may be an issue. But if not, I like to wear wool socks because they're extremely warm and you don't have to deal with the moisture problem. Cotton absorbs moisture where synthetic blends and uh, wool will wick them. So that way you don't have the water sticking to you, which you don't want when it's cold outside. But uh, for a mid-layer, a lot of times if you have like a nice fleece hoodie, that'll work. Pants, if you can find some synthetic blend pants, that's good. I often usually have like coveralls that I wear as well too. And then my outer shell is either like my Carhartt jacket or I have a bright orange winter parka that I use for hunting, which you'll probably see on those videos that I'll wear, as well as like a balaclava mask, a warm hat. You can wear mittens, gloves, or so I like to, sometimes the animal for if you get those really cool mittens, those are cool. Uh, they're a little bit harder to do things with, but wearing things like that and layering yourself, you can always take a layer off, but if you don't have enough on, you can get cold really quick, especially if you're wearing cotton and it gets wet. That'll stick right to you and you can freeze real easy. So my encouragement is, is wear the right gear, but Amy, there's all kinds of fun outside. Well, I, I do like how you're mentioning some of the clothing um, that is so important as a nurse. We, I certainly don't want to see anybody get harmed. And I think a lot of parents, you know, um, it's, it's expensive to provide certain types of clothing, especially if you have more than one kid. So just remember, I, I've picked up a ton of jackets, great clothing items at some of our resale shops. There's kids in distress. So there are, um, just check out some of the resale options um and then the pass me down thing that works i i work with friends to pass things down you know according to kids ages so yeah i agree the clothing is important but that can be part of the fun right is locating those three layers and 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 planning for it exactly and same thing with gear if you want to go out hiking and you want to learn how to cook and do those things those same places or other thrift stores or even uh like in town like whoopee bowl places like that you can always find like these little hidden gems uh, equipment that you can use. You don't need to bring out the pots from the kitchen. You can find old cooking pots that are available a lot of times at garage sales or antique stores. You might find these things and you can have all kinds of fun. Uh, a couple of things I do like if you're going to go out in the woods for a day and you want to do some cooking, easy things that you can take. A cast iron skillet is can be fun. Maybe get like a little grate. You don't have to use a grate, but sometimes it's nice to, if you have like a small like pit outside your yard, or if you're going to be going to like a state park and using that is have some type of grate for, you know, over the fire. Uh, there's all kinds of videos online. If you ever study bushcraft videos, they'll show you how to make little tripods to hang the stuff, but have a, have some type of cooking equipment, like a pot or a cast iron skillet. If you want to do backpacking ideas, you don't have to always buy, like there's some products like mountain house that are out there, but, um, you know, find freeze dried food can be fun. It's neat. You just got to pour water in, seal it up, cook it for 10 minutes and it's water. It's fun. But, uh, backpacking stoves can be cheap or you can spend a little bit more money. Get a jet boil. Those things, you can actually cook meals right inside. It's a little stove. You turn on the gas, you ignite it and you boil water for, you know, just a couple minutes. You can pour your, mixes right in there, or you can just pour the water inside of the containers they come in and you can have meals right on the trail. You don't even have to cook a big meal over fire. You just have a portable cup that cooks it for you. So there's a lot of cool things out there with that. And um, eventually what we're going to do too, is if you are interested, um, I, I should be able to get on at some point, maybe a list of some handy gear you want to have in your car or in a bag that you can take, but just in general, make sure that you layer um, bring some food and snacks if you want to do that. But as well, the one of the biggest things that a lot of people forget in the winter, hydrate. You lose moisture, you lose water in your body when you're out in the winter, as well as in the summer. Even though it's not hot, you still sweat, you still breathe and perspirate, and that relieves moisture. And so you want to bring water bottles with you as well, too. Stay hydrated, whether it's in the summer or the winter. So those are some of the things I recommend, Amy. Well, Mike, you know what I find really interesting in this, and I think the, the spin on this that my son would love, is you're talking about survival and back to the basic information um, that many of our, 
our teens and kids don't know about because they've had the convenience of, you know, Insta everything. Um, the convenience of, you know, just flipping on the microwave. But how would you cook, you know, without that? And if you were found outside, how would you start a fire? What are some of the safety things you need to consider? So I, and like you said, how do you pack your car in case of emergency? So all of those things, I think on a survival type thing, and it's, and the other factor is, is that a lot of us aren't eating out right now. So look at that, we can eat out. I am so excited to try this at home with my family. It, Amy, there's so many great recipes. And, and the funny thing is, if you have a cast iron skillet or a Dutch oven, it's amazing what you can do with those. Like some of the, my favorite desserts, like peach cobbler, apple cobbler, and that I cook right inside a cast iron outside in the wilderness or right in tinfoil. As, as silly as it sounds, I, what I love about it is when you're outside, like you said, it's survival, but it's also, you can thrive if you know what you're doing and you can create so many new ideas, like taking this limited resources and coming up with something like that. It just, it activates the imagination, gets the juices flowing in the brain. And when we're doing that, we're creating these experiences, we're connecting with our children and that connection alleviates the need to synthetically find things that we've got to absorb like drugs and other bad behavior that are not healthy for us. And we're, we're, it's that love, that connection, that camaraderie. There's something therapeutic about sitting around a bonfire. Ancient civilizations centered whole community activities around that bonfire. I think it's cool to bring those concepts back. And what a perfect time then in an era where we're really limited with where we can go. I mean, we're limited with a lot of indoor places now while it's cold. But that doesn't mean we have to be cooped up all day. It's just, it's, you're limited by your own imagination when it comes to these activities. Excellent, excellent point. I remember, and I'll tell you, even with my adult children, sitting in our own backyard, and this was in the summer because I hadn't expanded my mind to include the winter months, but sitting around a campfire, just staring at that fire, you're right, it does, it does stimulate a lot of conversation. Conversations. And I had some very deep conversations with my adult children that, you know, um, they kind of unloaded on me and then asked for parental advice, which surprised me. And that stuff doesn't always happen around a television so or a computer. So, and I think those human connections are what we all are missing right now. And I think this can really help my mood as well as my family's and and I, I encourage a lot of other parents, I, I'm excited about it, to try it. Johan Hari is an author of um, a couple different books. And I was listening to a TED talk of his. And one of the things that he said was real, it really stuck with me. He said, the opposite of addiction isn't sobriety. The opposite of addiction is connection. So when we're living connected lives, in many cases, we don't need to turn to synthetic things because we're getting what we need through those human interactions, through our faith, through other things like that. So I just find that outdoors can be a great way to truly connect. You're, you're, you're in natural elements. You're outside of the hustle and bustle of everything going on. You can just sit and have real conversations. So our encouragement for you guys is to really consider going outside and finding ways that you can share experiences with your children. Give them something new. These could be things that long-term could really be beneficial to their development. I can tell you some of the best experiences I've ever had with my children are outside. And there are groups out there if you ever want to consider having your children talk with like local scouting programs. There's other outdoor groups as well too. Uh, sportsman's clubs sometimes have youth programs, things like that in the area. It's a great way to maybe connect with other people through common interests. So that way you also are building family and uh, friend connections as well that could last a lifetime. And ultimately it's healthy. You're giving your body the right energy, um, you know, like dopamine and things like that naturally versus using other things. What a great time to just find something to do with your children. Wow. Photography is another thing as well, too. Take a couple pictures. Sky's the limit. It's up to you and your imagination. I love some of the ideas and you're right. Um, somebody that's interested in photography or writing books can write about these experiences and practice maybe a hobby that, you know, or even a profession, you know, just by taking and documenting some of the experiences that we have through photos or, or writings. So I think we're about out of time there, Mike. Sounds good, Amy. So we thank you guys for joining us. If you would tune in next week, we're going to look at indoor activities. 
Speaking of which, coming up at six o'clock tonight, we're going to be actually doing one of our continued series of our, um, their basically trivia nights that we do for our youth. So anybody that's middle school, high school age that would like to partake, it's at six o'clock. You can stay like right through the site here on Facebook. You can link that. Uh, the link's available. And our winners will typically are going to receive some type of prize. Usually gift cards from Amazon have been uh, given out lately. So we'll see how it goes. But um, we just want to encourage your youth, if you're looking for some ways to test your knowledge, give that a shot as well, too. But next week, we're going to be coming up with other indoor activities that you can do as well, too. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.